Le Air Station sono uno strumento che usiamo noi, uno strumento che abbiamo inventato noi per visualizzare un futuro possibile, un futuro che, che ci piacerebbe vivere in qualche modo. E, ma non lo facciamo per noi stessi, davvero crediamo che ispirare la creatività di ciascuno sia fondamentale. Diciamo sempre, eh, ognuno è designer di se stesso, in qualche modo. Nel, nel decidere come tagliarsi i capelli, come truccarsi, che scarpe mettersi, dove comprare la propria casa, ognuno fa delle scelte creative, in qualche modo. E, e stimolare questa creatività è il lavoro dei designer e degli architetti, perché stimolando la creatività eh, Favoriamo il progresso in qualche modo, favoriamo il desiderio di altri di inventare ancora qualcosa di nuovo, di pensare a qualcosa che è ancora più lontano e mai visto. Quindi è, è un modo per stimolare il futuro. Le Airstation sono state fatte per ispirare creatività. Le Airstation sono un, una grande storia. Grande perché, perché è grande, se mi metto adesso a raccontarla, ehm, domani siamo ancora qui a raccontarsela. Perché è una, è una storia molto grande, molto ricca, piena di tanti argomenti, piena di tante problematiche, piena di tante eh, ambizioni e sogni per il futuro. E, e parleremo delle Air Stations, questa sera racconterò cosa sono le Air Stations. Una delle caratteristiche principali delle Air Stations è che uh, il mondo del futuro funzionerà e funzionerà meglio se sarà più interconnesso. Se noi come uomini riusciamo a interconnetterci meglio, uh, proprio a interagire tra di noi in una maniera più, più efficiente, anche più, più serena, più gratificante perché uh, connettersi tra persone è sempre molto uh, arricchiente. E, e la cosa che ci è venuta da dire noi, da creativi, essendo un po' architetti, designer, ma anche artisti, grafici, fotografi, scrittori, tutto quanto, è che la creatività a noi non ci serve a niente. Se noi ci mettiamo con la testa tra le mani e diciamo adesso faccio il creativo, non sono creativo per niente, anzi, la creatività scompare perché quando la cerchi non ce l'hai mai. E invece la creatività è quella che si riesce a far crescere nelle persone che hai davanti, nei tuoi interlocutori. E se riesci a ispirare creatività, allora la tua creatività ha avuto un senso, ha avuto un effetto positivo. E quindi ci siamo detti, cosa, cosa facciamo per ispirare la creatività? E la cosa più semplice è proprio lanciare fantasie, lanciare visioni, lanciare immaginazioni. L'immaginazione è fondamentale per noi uomini. Non, non avremmo desiderio di vedere il futuro se non avessimo immaginazione in testa. E, e la ricchezza di immaginazione è fondamentale anche per trovare una ragione di... di di, di piacere personale, di impegnarsi per far sì che il futuro sia migliore di quello di oggi. Per voi che siete giovani ancora è presto, ma a un certo momento si incomincia a pensare beh vabbè ma adesso io me ne vado tra un po' e tutti gli altri cosa fanno? Co cosa gli lascio? Cosa, cosa, vogliamo, cosa vogliamo lasciare? E tutti, eh, tutti, non solamente le persone della mia generazione o di oggi, hanno pensato così. Anche, anche i papà e le mamme dei, dei, di, di bambini di mille anni fa, di duemila anni fa, hanno sempre cercato di realizzare qualche cosa che rendesse migliore la vita dei propri figli, la vita delle nuove generazioni. E questo passaggio eh, è stato fondamentale per, per accrescere le civiltà, per trovare nuove soluzioni, per, per migliorare lo stato delle cose. Eh, eh, da architetti alla fine facciamo questo.
But uh, let's talk really about what can we do to make the world sustainable, to make the world better than what it is. And, uh, and we're coming for the new generations, because uh, which is our, our real role than not to create a better world? There, there are beautiful stories by anthropologists and, um, and uh, historians and uh, neurologists, uh, scientists, uh, about uh, this uh, need that we feel inside ourselves to prepare always something that will optimize the life of people coming, oncoming. And, uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you, probably because I have such a long beard, and, uh, uh, and uh, I feel that uh, today the world, <coughs> the world is living in a very critical condition, very crucial condition. I think that uh, is the time in which we have to think much more seriously and much more um, efficiently about uh, what we are going to prepare for the new generations. This is a, um, is a I, I feel is, is very important, and, and I feel that really as the real scope of my, of my life today. And uh, I think that uh, um, is no longer time for me to speak about what I did, about what, uh, what have been my, my, my goal, which have been my, my most important project and results, but to speak about what would be great to do and what would be great for architects to, to, to do and to, and to act and, uh, in, in their profession. The title of uh, this, uh, this conversation tonight is just that. What can we do as an architect? And I say, we have to inspire creativity. As uh, I told before, uh, creativity is the most important tool that we have today. Because it will be more and more important in the future. We will... Creativity is uh, the, the, the key of, uh, of an happy, and, uh, and gratifying society in the future. We have to be creative, but uh, we have to be creative not for ourselves, to be creative to connect people. This is the task, uh, and the task is how to inspire creativity for a better, a, a better understanding and use of this planet. Um, to, 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 to better understand what, what I want to say, and to better and to better explain w w which are the, the the potentiality of aspiring creativity, we created the air stations. The air stations are just a tool, are just a, a an instrument to to give to give uh, the a touchable and understandable. Um, communication message, how we can build a better future. Um, we, we did uh, four categories of air stations. The first one are dedicated to how to make people living together, how to connect people, how, how to do in a way that people can interact in a, in a successful and, uh, and uh, uh, and a happy way. You, you know that uh, uh, we are in the, you know perfectly, everybody knows that we are in the time of uh, uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and human intelligence. And you know which is the big difference between, in, between artificial intelligence and human intelligence? <laughs> it all that uh, one is done by, by uh, microchips, uh, and the other is done by synapses in the brain. Uh, the real difference is that in artificial intelligence is done by computers connected one to the other. The, the, the artificial intelligence is great because it can use all the capability of processing of 
millions, thousands of millions, billions of computers. And the human intelligence is done by singular brains, singular, singular, uh, um, singular in, in intelligence not connected. You can, can you think how wonderful and huge will be the potential of human intelligence if we can connect all the brains of, of human beings in the world? Will be fantastic. Will, will be will be really uh, something that will will give another meaning to our life on this planet. So we did buildings just to bring together people and to create um, reasons and opportunities for con human connectivity. It's something that is already happening. For example, tonight we are in a showroom, in a showroom of uh, wonderful uh, uh, ceramics, uh, of uh, uh, wonderful products. But we are talking, we are, we are discussing, we are co co conversating each other. Uh, and, and this is already, and afterwards we will drink also a glass of wine. It is? Okay, fantastic. So this showroom is no longer just a place where to show some, something. It's a place in which we are trying to connect each other. A museum is no longer just a place where to hang paintings on the wall or, or, or putting uh, wonderful sculptures on, on the pedestal. A museum is a, a place where we go to, to eat, to, to drink, to have a coffee, to, to, to choose a book, to look to what uh, happened uh, in the world, uh, to have, to have uh, meetings, conversations, presentations, so on and so on. An office, the offices are, are no longer just uh, uh, rows of uh, desks one after the other. An office is a place in which we try to, to, to get the maximum of knowledge from our, from our colleagues, from our friends, from, our, from the people that we meet in the office. Offices will change dramatically in the next future. Well, so these are just uh, buildings like that. Buildings in which we try to create the maximum of multifunctionality, to create the maximum of multi-connectivity, multi-interactions. The second category of uh, air stations are dedicated to the, human, to the human being that uses hands, and it's called many hands. Uh, have, you never, uh, uh, have you never thought why Venice is so beautiful, or our historical cities are so beautiful. Our Piazza del Duomo, here, uh, 300 meters away, is so beautiful, because it's done by hands. And, uh, and the beauty of hands is something that will resist in the centuries and will never become uh, uh, obsolete. Everything that is produced by hands has a, a special quality because as the quality of the human mind that are directly connected to, to the to, to, to sense, directly connected with the, with the other people that did the same, uh, in this, uh, I would say, heroic activity that is to build. build building are something that should become something heroic. So we created uh, buildings uh, that are monuments uh, to the civilization of hands. And, uh, and are done just uh, uh, for the five climates that are um, in some way characterizing the world. Because uh, no way craftsmanship is uh, fully related to what you can find where you are. So uh, where you can get in touch with uh, what nature provides you in the, in, in, the, in the different regions. And uh, we, we created buildings for the tropical climate, for the polar climate, for the um, uh, Siberian and continental climate, for the temperate climate where we are now, and for the, for the desert climate of Sahara and so on. So each climate has a different building, and this can become wonderful monuments to everything that is produced by hands, especially food. Because food is the most appreciated, uh, authentic, and made product. We, 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 everybody is ready to, to accept and to, 
uh, to admire and to taste something that is produced by hand and that is produced in the region and that is a part of the culture of the region. <coughs> and uh, if we can build something like that, designed by architects of today, but produced with the hand of people that is living in the singular region, also in the regions where the uh, extreme climate today that are, uh, is probably um, is probably the reason why a lot of people have to move and has to immigrate in other countries. Uh, because they, they will become uh, just uh, destination places. They can become, uh, think to how beautiful has been the idea of uh, Mr. Uh, Gaudi to create the Sacrada Familia. The Sacrada Familia is an heroic building. It's something that is, is done by hand, putting one one stone on the top of the other, and uh, we, we, we go to Barcelona just to see the Sagrada Familia. Okay. Uh, what else? The third, the, third, the third point, the third category of illustrations is concerning education. Because we cannot create a better world if we are not conscious about what's happened before, what we are, and what we can expect to be. Education is fundamental today because the world is changing. I feel that I have a lot to unlearn and a lot to learn, and that's the point also. Well, education is not only a matter of uh, being, uh, being informed about what's, what's happening, what, what happened in the Middle Ages or in the Roman Empire and so on and so on, because all this kind of information are already available everywhere in our, um, in our telephone and in our computers. But the problem is how we can use all the knowledge that we have and all the, the knowledge that artificial intelligence will provide to everybody. And, uh, if, and, and so I thought we have to build, also because architecture is a way of learning. Uh, there's a, a beautiful expression of uh, Mr. Loris Malaguzzi. Um, Loris Malaguzzi is a fantastic uh, um, psychoanalyst that uh, uh, he, he lived um, till 20 years ago. Maybe you know because he's, he, he's the creator of Reggio, Reggio Children. Reggio Children is, a, is really something that I met and I discovered in Vietnam, just to tell you what Reggio Children is. Reggio Children is an organization founded and dedicated to education. Education in these terms. Education in a way that people, people, that pupils, that children learn how to use their creativity. And uh, uh, the, the most important sentence that I mentioned before uh, of Loris Malaguzzi is that architecture is the third education. The first educator is the family, the second educator is society, the third educator is architecture, is the building, is the environment in which we live, is the atmosphere, is the, is the, 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 the empathy that we can create through ourselves and other people, our, our environment and, and the people that live and enjoy our environment. So education is fundamental. And uh, I think that uh, we can really use our profession as architect and our wonderful opportunities that we have every time that we, we have to build something to educate, to, to enter in empathy with the people. Uh, neurologists, they discover how much imp important is the environment for the growth of our personality. But this is, is something very easy to know and to, to, to understand. And we know already because we know that we are, if we are uh, in a happy and, uh, and uh, lightful environment, we feel <laughs> happiness and we feel light inside ourselves. And if we are in an oppressed and dark and sad environment, we, we, our emotions are, are, are affected. Well, so buildings for creating connectivity, building to celebrate the human body and nature, building to educate, and the last one is building to create 
better communities. The world is done by communities. I'm happy to have the chance to tell you a bit more about this last chapter, as we didn't have the chance to show before, I think, if I remember. So it's, a, it's an opportunity to just enter a bit more in this chapter of uh, living together. No? So this last chapter is really about uh, community and, and community that um, are crea created around passions, no? around what, uh, what we like to do together. No? So it's the idea of creating uh, um, places where we, people with certain passion, just want to share the public spaces. And, and they are designed really, uh, normally when you design an apartment, no, you start from the single apartment. No? And, and the idea here was really to start the opposite way. Let's start from, from the space that we share and what are all the space in a normal house that we share, and how can we improve and just, just try to make this uh, bigger, more functional, more, more interesting to create new community. No? So th the first one we're going to show you is this, uh, that we call the iridescent community. No? And this, um, this house, as you see, this building, no, is made out of a series of, of house uh, that can be duplex or single house that are on top of a single transparent platform, I would say. You know? And this, this amazement, this, uh, this platform of this, uh, of this building is a space where we accommodate a lot of social activities. You no, know? those spaces for, for meeting, for get togethers, uh, spaces also where different people from different generations can, uh, can stay together. So having space in which uh, uh, children and elder, elderly and people can grow together, no? That, that's the topic of education that, that we, we were mentioning before, no? And this happened inside one communal building, no? A space in which, in this very light space, we, we do this type of, of activity. The second one that we, we designed is, is what we call the, the green community, no? And, and the green community, as, as you see here, is, uh, a series of buildings, you know, again, of, of apartments and houses that are around this uh, central element. You know? It looks like a, a fireplace. You know? So buildings that are around, like staying around the, the swarm fireplaces. And, and this place in, in the center is a very tall, big greenhouse and a place where we can grow things. We can grow vegetables, we can grow plants, we can cultivate uh, um, our passion for, for nature, no? And this uh, very high, tall central element is where we, again, where all these people of the community just get together, you know, and, and, and can share this passion for, for horticulture, for agriculture, and, uh, and it's really a warm heart of this community, you know, just with all this building all, all around. The third one, the, the third one that, that we design is, is this uh, blue community. You know? And uh, in this case, we thought of dedicating what is normally considered the most uh, beautiful part of the building. You no, know, it's the attic, is where everybody wants to have their own apartment. You no, know? it says the attic. It's a, it's a common attic. So the building are separated, but then there are bridges that connect all this, this attic, this very, again, light and luminous attic. And, and these spaces are thought to be um, kind of workplaces of co-working, of spaces where we can go and do our work. I mean, we've seen it during this pandemic how important it was to have a, a corner in our house where, where to work and to do our job. And that's, we think, why we don't do it together with the other people of, uh, of our community? So these are going to be offices, those are going to be labs, it's where Again, where we can create unexpected interaction, where we can start to meet uh, somebody that's working on uh, design, architecture, uh, finance, we don't know. But it's, it's through this community of people that works together on the top of their houses that we can build new and special community. The, the fourth one, uh, the first one is, is a skyscraper. No? It's our idea of a skyscraper somehow. It's uh, of a tower. Um, we called it a gold community, and uh, this, uh, in this building, we, we thought that the spine you know, of, a, of a tower building, of, of a skyscraper like this, that normally is just uh, stairs and elevator, can be the space of, of the community. It's the space where all the community can, um, 
can stay. And, and so we thought of this vertical library. Uh, the idea is to have, uh, yeah, books all around uh, in this vertical tower where we, throughout the entire building, we can share our passion for, for culture. So which is reading book, uh, but it can be about painting, it can be about teaching to somebody. It's really uh, a very luminous vertical spaces where we learn about this, uh, the culture, this culture topic. And this becomes really the, the spine of the building. Now the back of the building just goes throughout this entire space where we have this very beautiful and luminous, uh, luminous environment. The, the last one we, we talk about is this, um, is the bright community. The, the bright community is sort of like um, a building with a, a central courtyard um, where the space, again, that are normally occupied just by, by stairs that connect vertically, um, are the space where to create. Uh, so all the blocks of this, this vertical distribution throughout the space are um, space where you can do, you do your own little hobbies, your craft. You can uh, fix your bike, uh, you can work on your, uh, and fix your, your cars, uh, um, you can play music or, or play some, some kind of sport in this uh, shared uh, central void. You know? So the apartments are all around, and then at the center of this space, uh, anybody can work with their own end. So the idea of this is a space in which we really can, can do our, our craft, which can be, yeah, wood crafting with, with the chainsaw we showed before, or like uh, a more technological type of crafting. And this creates, again, another type of community that is a hand-based, uh, I would like to say, kind of, um, of community. And uh, as, as we mentioned before, no, we, we decided to call this, uh, this community the, the Epi Station. That's our idea of a possible way of creating new way of living together. I don't know if you want to add something, Michael. Uh, I want to add, uh, yes, uh, excuse me, I want to add, uh, because you will be probably surprised by this name, stations, uh, because um, stations, when we say stations, we think to, to the railway stations or the bus stations or the taxi stations or so on. But uh, stations is something that we did deliberately because uh, we thought that we are just in, in, a, in a moment of such a, of such a tremendous and a dramatic change that we need the stations. We need the places where to understand where to go. They are not air stations. They are not stations to go to the Mars or to come back from the moon or to go to, I don't know where, some other uh, galaxy. These are air stations to stay on this planet. Right now, we don't have any alternatives. So it's better if we think how to survive here, how to take the best and, uh, and possibly without destroying everything, and possibly and absolutely without destroying everything. So uh, air stations are just uh, stations to stay on the planet to, to take advantages from everything that we have and to think how to, 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 to give a future to this planet. Uh, yes, as you uh, understood, our message, our message, my message to the circle and the message of the circle is very simple. Is, is what I learned to do when I went to school and that should not be any longer uh, a, a, a mental attitude of architects. I remember when I went to school at university in Florence. It was a beautiful university in a beautiful, in a beautiful city. Florence is beautiful. In a beautiful time, because it was the time of uh, radical architecture, and, uh, and uh, it was something very special in Italy. But in any case, when I went to school, I learned how to build walls, and how to build walls to separate, to separate apartments, to separate properties, to separate uh, uh, cities uh, and suburbias, and, uh, and uh, to separate, to separate, to separate. Walls are done to separate. Should not be like that any longer, because buildings, they should be done to bring people together. And that is, will be so easy, so easy, if we start to think that walls are not only boundaries, are not only limits, but they are just places 
are just places to cultivate our, ourselves, our properties, our intelligence, our personality, with the property of the other. So words are no longer one against the other, but it's a space that we can create through ourselves. It's a space of cultivation. It's a place, in, it's a place in which we can really create a better society and better communities.